This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Today, we are going through 10 of my favorite productivity apps for the iPhone here in 2021. Though I'm actually gonna start this list out with a productivity feature of the iPhone that isn't actually an app, but is useful nonetheless. It's this little magnetic wallet thing that you can get from Apple that just snaps onto the back of your phone. But the cool thing is it's got this little thumb slidey thing where if you have a credit card that you uh, frequently use, or in my case, an office access key, it's very easy to slide it up, scan it wherever you need to scan it and put it right back on your phone, just like that. So figured I'd mention that because because I've been enjoying this and it's definitely a purchase that I don't regret. Let's get into the list of apps. And the first app we're gonna talk about is called Otter, which is an amazingly good AI voice transcription app. So as a YouTuber, I get a lot of ideas for content, often at times when I can't easily either write something down or pull my phone out to take notes. And in those cases, I take a lot of voice memos, but a lot of times I would love to have those voice notes translated into text so I can then port them over to Notion or use them and actually you know go through the text and edit it and things like that. Otter is freaking amazing at doing that. I've tried a ton of other apps, some that have Apple Watch integrations, which I really would like for Otter, but they use this built-in Siri dictation, which is just not that great at translating your voice into readable text. Meanwhile, Otter does not, as far as I can tell, have a real human shoved into your phone who's literally you know, acting as a court stenographer and typing out your text but it might as well. The transcription is nearly as good as the human transcription that I actually pay for for these YouTube videos, which means that when I speak something while I'm driving or while I'm out on the bike, I can basically guarantee that when I come and read the text later on, it's going to look pretty much like I said it. It also keeps the audio file. It's not quite as high quality of an audio file as you get with regular voice memos, so I don't use it for song ideas, but it does keep the audio file, which is nice because it allows me to export both the audio file and the text into drum roll, please, the very next app on our list, which is, you saw this coming, Notion. So Notion is an app that I talk about a lot. In fact, I have an entire second channel called Thomas Frank Explains, full of Notion tutorials, link in the description down below if you're curious. And if you haven't heard of Notion, it is basically an all-in-one workspace app, which allows you to take notes, it allows you to manage tasks, it allows you to do pretty much anything you want. And at this point, I'm using it fully for running my channel, for managing my tasks, for running projects, and for taking all the notes that I want to take and for writing all the scripts for my videos. Now, last time I talked about Notion on my channel, there was no actual official widget, but now there is. And in fact, there are a couple that are very useful, which I want to show you right now. The one that I keep right on my home screen here is the favorites bar. And a trick that I use is I keep a dashboard page with links to a lot of the things I'm working on because I often have more links than will fit on this widgets area. I think it only keeps uh, about nine links at one time. So using this dashboard, I can actually create like a central place for all of the important things in my life, including my tasks, my notes, content with my channel, with Thomas Frank Explains, my other channel, and ongoing projects. And I have like this hub page that allows me to easily get to anything I wanna get when I wanna add something or reference something. The other nice thing though, is there's another widget, which I keep over here on this uh, quick access area, which shows you your recent pages. So instead of relying just on your manually created favorites bar, you have all of your recent pages right here and I can get to say the research and notes for this very video and look there's Otter there's Notion and there is our third app which I'm going to now smoothly transition into. So Authy is a manager for two-factor authentication codes that functions a lot like Google Authenticator. Hopefully you are using two-factor authentication on any account that offers it in addition to your passwords if you care about your online security. Now, one thing you might not know about two-factor authentication is there's two different types, SMS-based or text message-based and app-based like Google Authenticator or in this case, Authy. SMS-based authentication is actually a lot less secure because identity thieves and uh, you know hackers and people like that have been known to spoof your SIM card, essentially calling up your phone company, convincing them that they are you and convincing them to uh, set up a new device with the exact same SIM information so they get the text messages that you're supposed to get, including two-factor auth messages, which is why whenever I have the choice, I use app-based authentication instead of text message authentication. But there's a problem with app-based two-factor auth, especially with Google Authenticator, at least last time I used it, it didn't sync 
between different devices, which means if you accidentally drop your phone down an elevator shaft, you're out of luck and you have to spend a ton of time doing password resets or hopefully pulling you know, backup codes that you had for your two-factor authentication. It's a whole big mess. So that's why I like Authy because you can log into your account and get your two-factor auth codes back. And as long as you're using a secure password for that account, I think it's still pretty secure. Now, the next app that we're gonna talk about is the only one on my list that doesn't have an Android equivalent. Uh, this is an app called Command, which is actually a web browser and it has a killer feature that you probably know about if you saw my iPad video earlier this year. That feature is that you can highlight text within any web page. And then once you highlight it, not only is it going to stay highlighted or highlight, I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that, uh, when you refresh the page, but you can also tap your highlights and you can add journal entries, which allow you to essentially take notes on the highlights you make. I have written entire articles inside commands journal feature because I'll take a highlight from something I'm reading on the web, get inspired, and then I'll just you know think I'm gonna take a little bit of a note and then it balloons into a huge article. The other thing that I love about command is it actually can send the highlights that you take to your Readwise account. And I guess I should just talk about Readwise now because it is the next app on our list. So Readwise is basically a highlight manager for the knowledge that you intake from various sources, books, Kindle books, podcasts, using an app called Air, which I will talk about a little bit later, um, even tweets and content from your web browser. Now, there is a way to sync highlights from mobile Safari to Readwise, but it's kind of a friction full process and command makes it much, much easier. So I love doing research and doing highlighting using the command browser when I'm reading blog posts and articles. But coming back to Readwise, Readwise is essentially a highlight manager that can resurface and help you recall the knowledge that you've gathered over time. It's got this daily review area, which will actually give you a collection of different highlights so you can remember them more usefully. I don't use that too much. What I actually do is I kind of use this as a database for a lot of the highlights that I take in books and other pieces of media. But the thing that I really love about Readwise is that not only does it store all of my highlights here, like these highlights from the book Ask Iwata that I've been reading really recently, but there is a native integration with both Notion and with Rome Research and also with RemNote, I believe. So whenever you take a highlight from Kindle or from the command browser or from even the Safari extension or tweeting Readwise to roll up a tweet thread, it'll send it to Readwise and then Readwise will dutifully kick that highlight over to your integration platform. In my case, it's Notion. So I have a beautiful Readwise database on Notion where I've got all of my highlights from books and articles and all kinds of media sources. And then when I'm doing research for an article, I can pull in my highlights into my research areas. And actually now with Notion's synced blocks feature, I don't even have to copy and paste. I can just create a synced block and port content over from my highlights area into whatever article that I'm writing, which is pretty sweet. Next up on our list is one called Tide, which is my favorite Pomodoro timer for the iPhone. Now it's got a ton of different features. It can track your stats. It's got all these nature sounds. So you can create these soundscapes that help you focus. Personally, I just like the way that it looks. I like the fact that it's free and I like the fact that I can open up, I can hit the focus button, I can choose 25 minutes and I can start a Pomodoro session. And like I've said before, the Pomodoro technique is one of the most powerful short-term productivity techniques there is because it externalizes the self-discipline that you need to keep working, but it also reframes your task from output-based to input-based. As in, I have to write a paper, which is really daunting and scary to, I just need to work on this paper for 25 minutes and then I'm allowed to take a break. The next step on my list is actually a built-in app in the phone. So if you have an iPhone, you already have this and it's the fitness app, or I don't know if it's called fitness or activity, but this is absolutely a productivity app for me because when I'm active, when I'm moving, when I am exercising every day, I also feel more energetic and I get more done and I work with more focus. Exercise is absolutely associated with cognitive performance. And if you wanna learn more about that, there's a great book by Dr. John Rady called Spark. Highly recommend that, especially if you like books full of scientific studies, but having this app and specifically its integration with the Apple Watch and uh, the face here that shows me about my rings every time I look at the Apple Watch, encourages me to get my exercise done. I've actually got the trends thing activated here so I can see that 
pretty much all my trends are on the up. I've been moving more, I've been exercising more, I've been standing more, walking more, all kinds of stuff. One of my favorite things about the fitness app is the sharing aspect of it. So if we go over to the sharing tab, you're gonna see that I actually have shared my fitness data and vice versa with some of my friends, Brian from Real Engineering, who probably forgot to put on his Apple Watch today. Uh, my friend Chris, who wrote the Productivity Project and Hyperfocus, my agent Dave, and also Renee Ritchie from the channel Renee Ritchie, who talks a lot about Apple. So using the sharing feature, we all get notified when we work out, we send each other fun emojis to encourage each other. We'll sometimes check in and be like, hey, how come you haven't gotten your workout done today? It adds some nice accountability into your daily exercise routine, even if your friends are far flung across the globe. So next up on our list is Audible, which is an app that I've been using for a very, very long time, but I've actually been using a lot more heavily recently because I am now riding an e-bike to my downtown co-working office on any day where I don't have to sit in this chair chair and film videos in my studio. And I absolutely love riding my bike, getting out of the house, going somewhere else to work. And that whole process of riding, actually about 40 miles on the e-bike, gives me a ton of time to listen to things that I can use to educate myself. So Audible is probably my number one resource for that since I love listening to audiobooks. And one thing that I did want to point out on the iPhone now that the uh, home screen widgets feature is live, is that Audible has a widget which allows you to scroll down and basically resume the last book that you were listening to or pick one of the four that you listened to most recently other than that one. So it's a nice way to just launch into a book that you were listening to recently without having to open up the app and wait for it to load. Next up on our list is an app called Adobe Scan, which is probably the best free document scanner app on the iPhone. This is gonna look really weird because you're gonna see a camera and I'm moving it around. Hi, other camera. Anyway, this is a great app for scanning paper documents and then exporting them as PDFs or as uh, picture files and porting them into your knowledge management system. In my case, it's gonna be Notion, it might be Rome Research or Evernote for you, but it's really nice to have a document scanner app on the phone. Next up, we have Spotify for podcasts. Yep, I have finally switched over to just using Spotify as my default podcast player. I resisted it for a very long time. I was a Pocket Casts fan, but it's good enough now in Spotify. They've got the speed controls, they've got the sleep timer function, and uh, it's fast. That's a really nice thing. Now, I really wanted to uh, recommend an app called Air instead of Spotify in this slot in the video. Air is a really cool podcast player that has a killer feature. My friend Ali Abdal actually turned me on to this app, so you may have heard him talking about it if you watch his videos, but Air is not just a podcast player, it's also an app that integrates with Readwise, and it has this really cool feature where if you're listening to something in a podcast episode and you want to make a highlight of it, you want to save it, you want to add a note to it, you can do that by hitting this little quote button here. And it's going to save either the last 30 seconds or the last minute. You can change uh, the duration if you want, and you can add a little note and it's going to send that to Readwise, which again would send to Notion or uh, Rome Research or RemNote if you have that integration created. It is super cool, but the performance of this app is just, it's just not great right now. It's slow. If I want to like rewind 15 seconds, it takes like five seconds just to do it and start playing again. So I'm really hoping that they're going to improve the performance of this app. And once they do that, I'm going to be probably switching over to using it because I really do want to use that Readwise feature. I just need it to be faster. Now, if you're watching a video on my channel about iPhone apps, then I would say it's probable that you also watch one of my favorite tech YouTubers, Marques Brownlee, AKA MKBHD. And if you do, I want to let you know about a new course he just launched over on Skip Skillshare all about how to create great YouTube videos. I cannot think of many other people who I would rather have teach me how to make a great YouTube video than Marquez, especially because his quality is, well, let's just use the term that he uses. It's absolutely crispy. It's amazing. I've taken a lot of inspiration from his setup, his gear, the way he films things to improve the quality of the footage on my own channel. And if you want to learn how to upgrade your own YouTube game or even start a channel, if you haven't done it yet, his course over on Skillshare is a great place to start. And the wonderful thing about Skillshare is that when you join, you don't just get access to Marquez's class. You get access to thousands of classes that can boost your skills and your creative abilities in a ton of different areas, including productivity, because I have three different classes on Skillshare of my own, one on building a productivity system that combines apps to make sure that nothing ever falls through the cracks. Also on Skillshare, you're going to find classes in graphic design, in video animation, in music production, in storytelling and public speaking. There is a ton that you can learn on Skillshare, and it's also a very affordable platform. In fact, if you are one of the first 1,000 people to sign up for Skillshare today using the link down below, you're going to get a one-month free trial, which means that you can go 
take my classes. You can go take MKBHD's class for free and test out the platform for a month before you have to pay anything. It's a great platform. I really think you're going to get a lot of value out of it and you're going to want to keep paying for it after the trial period is over, but you've got that trial to try it out. So once again, go to that link down in the description below, sign up, be one of the first thousand people to get that free one month trial. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found something helpful here. And I would also like to hear from you. What are your favorite apps that I did not mention in this video? Leave down in the comment section below and we can all try new things out and, uh, you know, probably end up spending too much time on our phones and not actually being productive. Whoops. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.